Well, good morning. God bless you. This is the day in which the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. How excited we are to see another day in which the Lord has made. We are grateful to God for what God has done. This is day 18 of 21 Days of Life-Changing Prayer, and we are grateful to our God to start our day again in fellowship with God and fellowship um, with one another. This morning, we're going to be back um, in Psalm 51. This will be our final day in Psalm 51, verse number 11. That's Psalm 51, verse number 11. I'll be back at the top of the hour to lead us through our day 18 on today. Go ahead and meditate on this verse, and I'll be back at the top of the hour. For those of you who are just joining us, we're going to be in Psalm 51, verse number 11 on today. Reminder to all of our men that we're going to have our men's fellowship in Richmond on this morning at 8 a.m. Our town hall is this morning at 10 o'clock a.m. So look forward to seeing many, if not all of you, on today. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for an awesome opportunity to engage your word, uh, to be embraced with this life-changing prayer uttered by your servant, David. We pray, O oh God, that on this day that our lives will be different, that, God, we will continue to grow and be consecrated unto you. God, we love you. Uh, we want to live our lives that are pleasing in your sight. We need your help. We need your assistance. We need your power. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen and amen. Psalm 51, verse 11 says, Cast me not away from your presence, or take your Holy Spirit from me. Or take not your Holy Spirit from me. Take not your Holy Spirit from me me. That's our life-changing prayer today. Do not take your Holy Spirit from me. In the Old Testament, Holy Spirit used in verse 11 is used only here and in Isaiah chapter 63 verses 10 through 11. Since the predominant characteristics of God's Spirit in the Old Testament is that of energizing force. The prayer is for a willing spirit, for life renewed and yielded to God once again. See, sin can leave us powerless and without authority for living our lives. That's what Walter Brueggemann says about the consequences and the power of sin, that sin can leave us powerless and without authority for living our lives. Only a new heart and transformed spirit will restore the joy of our salvation. Let me say that again. David came to realize that only a new heart and transformed spirit will restore the joy of salvation. David did not want God's spirit to leave him the way the spirit left King Saul in 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 14. And I read, Now the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. See, when this happened, Saul could not do any longer what he used to do. And David saw this dejected, powerless Saul. David lived with the conviction that the Holy Spirit makes the difference. Christ followers on this morning, we should be praising God that the Holy Spirit resides in us and fills each believer. The Apostle Paul says that we are sealed to the day of redemption. David could not envision a life without the Holy Spirit, 
and neither should us on today. David desired the following. When you look at it, David desired to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to feel the Holy Spirit's presence, and to function through the Holy Spirit. Again, David had witnessed this tragedy in King Saul's life, the danger of trying to live a life without the Spirit of God. See, David teaches the saints of God that we are to live a Spirit-filled and Spirit-led life. Therefore, David uttered the prayers, Lord, do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Well, this is also New Testament language that we should be familiar with on today. But if not, allow me to read to you what Paul says to us in Galatians chapter 5, around verse 16. He says, live by the Spirit. I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the spirit. And what the spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not subject to the law. The Apostle Paul is teaching us that if we truly want to live a consecrated life, if we really want to live a life that's pleasing unto God, if we really want to live a meaningful, purpose-filled life, we must live by the Spirit. Because it's only when we live by the Spirit and the Holy Spirit is in charge of our lives that Paul says we can and will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Notice that he didn't say that our flesh would no longer have desires, but he did say that the Spirit of God will give us the power not to gratify these desires, not to fulfill these desires, not to surrender to these desires. Simply put, if we want our life to change, our prayer must be like David. Lord, do not take your Holy Spirit from me. That's our power source. That is how we're able to live the life that God wants us to live. Let's pray on this morning. Lord, we thank you for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit in us. And Father, we surrender our ways, our thoughts, the seat of our will to be led, guided, and directed by your Holy Spirit. We thank you that your Holy Spirit has the power to prevent us from doing what we want to do and to please the flesh. It is our prayer that as long as the Holy Spirit resides in us, we will not quench the Spirit. We will not overrule the Spirit, but we will simply submit to your Spirit to lead us, guide us, and direct us. We thank you for not leaving us alone. We thank you for the Comforter. We thank you for our Counselor. We thank you for the one who helps us in our prayers to pray like we should pray. So, Father, like David, we pray on this morning. Do not take your Holy Spirit from us. And we pray this prayer in the only name that matters. Jesus, who is the risen Christ, and the people of God said, Amen and Amen.